Hey everyone here from Tunnel Vision TV and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to do camera tracking using Nuke. So first of all when you open up Nuke I'm going to press S on the keyboard to go to my project settings and then I'm going to make sure this is set to uh, HD. Whoops, let's just set that to HD 1080 so it's 1920 by 1080 and then you can close that again and then I'm going to bring in my clip. So I'm just going to scroll through here and I'm just going to drag this in. Um, you can either create a read note or you can just drag in your footage and then with that clip selected I'm going to press 1 on my keyboard to connect my viewer. So uh, before we start uh, doing the camera tracking I want to just change something um, on my image. I actually want to just give it a bit of a grade and also make it a bit sharper. So with that uh, clip selected I'm going to press tab on the keyboard and then I'm going to type grade and that's automatically going to add a grade node connected to that clip. So on this grade node, I'm just going to play with the black point and the white point to give it some contrast. So just something, something like that should be fine. And then with your grade node selected, press tab again and then type sharpen. Okay, and that's automatically going to create a sharpen node uh, that's connected to your grade node. And if you double click on your sharpen node, you can go in here and currently the default size is set to 3, which is a bit much. So I'm going to change it back to 2. And that's just going to add a bit of a sharp, um, a sharpen filter to this image. So if I disable that, you'll see uh, the difference. And we're only doing this to get a better track from our footage. So once we've got the track, we can disable these two nodes again. All right, so I'm going to close that down. And then we're going to create our tracker node. So with sharpen selected, I'm going to press tab on the keyboard. And then you can type camera and you can select camera tracker. So before we get started with the tracking, um, let's just quickly talk about some camera trackers out there. I've used uh, After Effects, which is okay for uh, really simple, simple stuff. And then PF Track is really, really great. But I actually find that Nuke's built-in camera tracker is amazing. And um, I've been using it for quite a bit now. And it's actually a bit simpler than using PF Track. So if you want to get great results, Nuke is the way to go. So with your camera tracker selected, we're going to go to the settings tab and I usually do about 500 um, features. So just type in 500 there. Those are the amount of tracking features and then also tick this preview features. So you can just get a quick preview in your scene um, where it's going to track like that. And if I quickly just scrub through this, you'll see it's a very basic handheld shot. So it's a bit shaky. And uh, because of that, I want to set my camera motion to free camera. Um, you can change this if it's a rotation only if it's like on a tripod you can change these settings but because it's a free moving camera just put it on free camera and uh, everything else you can basically leave as default and then we're going to go back to the camera tracker tab and everything here is also fine camera motion is set to free camera and uh, then you can basically just go ahead and click on track and that's going to track through your timeline and it's also going to track backwards and while it's busy doing its track, um, I'm just going to quickly chat about some settings here on the side. So you can also set your focal length. So if you know you've shot this, say, on 24mm or on 50mm uh, 50, 50 lens, you can uh, set this to known and you can type it in. Um, it will give you slightly better results. So, But for this one, I'm not really going to do that. And then you can also set your film back size, which is basically your sensor size. Um, and it's got some presets here, so you can go down, say you've shot this on a DSLR, you can go to, uh, let's say, Canon and DSLR, and you can select your DSLR here. So that will just give it um, the correct size of that uh, camera sensor. So I'm just going to quickly fast forward through this. Okay, so our track completed, and the next step is to solve your camera. So you're on the side, just click on solve, and that's basically just going to solve your uh, 3D camera. It usually is very quickly, a few seconds. Okay, so the solve is done. And then you'll see all these little uh, green and some orange uh, little tracking markers on your screen. If you scrub through them, you'll see uh, they're tracking to the shot. So next step is to actually go in and clean up our track to make it even better. So to do that, we're going to go to Auto Tracks tab here at the top. And then you'll see your solve error score. And this one is currently set to 0 0.68, which is actually really, really good. Um, I usually think anything below 1 is very good. Um, but we can try and make that even better. So uh, here at the bottom, you've got your minimum length and your maximum track error and your max error. 
and then you've got refine and all these other things here at the bottom. So what I first usually do is the minimum length of your trackers. That's the amount of frames. And I usually up this a bit to around, let's say to around 12. And if you increase this all the way, you'll see like a lot of these trackers will go red and they will be deleted. So you don't want to delete too many trackers off your screen. So you kind of need to play with the slider and see uh, where you still have a lot of trackers uh, on the screen and that you can delete all the ones with a uh, length shorter than that. So I'm going to set it to 12 for now. And then you also have your max track error, which is currently pretty low, 3.75. And we can bring that down even further. So let's set that to three. We still have a lot of green on our screen. And then also the maximum error, which is currently a bit high, 8.9, slightly high. I'm going to bring that down slowly, look at the screen, try not to lose too many trackers. And I'm going to set that to six. Okay, so now we've got all these red and orange markers and I want to delete them. So first of all, I'm going to click on delete rejected. Yes, and you'll see those trackers will be deleted. And then we also want to delete all our unsolved trackers. So click on delete unsolved. Yes, and that will delete all the other ones left. So it will only keep all the green, all the good trackers on the screen. And then we also want to refine our solve. But to refine it, you just need to tick these three boxes for focal length, position and rotation. And then we're going to click on refine solve. And let's see what happens. So as you can see, it brought the score down to 0 0.6. Very good score. Anything below one, as I mentioned before, is really great. So now we can go back to our camera tracker uh, tab. And before we create our camera or before we create our scene, there's one more thing that I want to do. And that is just to tell um, Nuke where the actual floor plane is. And a very easy way to do that is just click on the screen and drag a box around some of these trackers that's on the ground or on the floor. And you can uh, just hold in shift and you can select a few more. You don't have to select all of them, uh, but just a couple that's on the floor plane. Something like that. And you can hold in shift and you can just uh, like select a few extra, maybe on the side. And then you right click on one of them. And then you go to ground plane and you click on set to select it. And that's basically just going to set those to the ground plane. So if we quickly go into the 3D view here at the top, and if I zoom in here, and if I just pan around here a bit, you'll see those uh, trackers are now set to the floor, kind of the average, because they're not perfectly flat. It's going to try and get the average. And um, that looks pretty good. Let's go back to our 2D view. So now we're ready to create our camera or our scene. So here in the properties on the side, I'm going to click on this drop down here where it says camera. And then I'm going to click on scene. And then one more thing where it says link output, I'm going to untick that. Um, that basically means it's going to link your scene to your tracker. So if you do some changes to the tracker, it will update your scene. And for this one, I know I've got a good track going here, so I'm not really going to change anything. So I'm not going to link it. And then you can just click on create and that will create a camera and it will also create a scene and also a point cloud node. Okay, so I'm just going to resize this so that we've got a bit of extra space here. So there's our uh, point cloud and our scene and also our camera. And now before we can actually view our scene, we need to create a renderer and we're going to create a scan line renderer. So I'm going to hit tab and then I'm going to type scan and I'm going to select scan line renderer. And then you've got some inputs here. You've got your BG, your background, and then you've got your object or scene and then also camera. So for background, I'm going to connect my clip and for object or scene, I'm going to connect that to my scene and then I'm going to connect the camera to the camera pipe like that. Okay, and then I can connect my viewer to my scanline renderer. So then you've got your point cloud and you can see if you play through it that the point cloud is sticking nicely to this shot. So let's just go back there. And now I can actually start to bring in some test objects. So let's do that. All right, so what I usually do is I connect my viewer to my camera tracker so that I can select some of these points. Maybe click on this point right here in the middle right click on it and go to create and I'm just going to create a card which is basically like a flat surface click on that and then it's going to create this card for you and then I'm going to connect my viewer back to my scanline renderer okay and then I'm going to connect my card to my scene because all objects that you uh, create in you can need to connect them to your scene and uh, then if I double click on my card to go into the properties I just want to set the rotation to zero and that's basically going to be up right like that so we need to just uh, rotate this, I think it's 90 degrees on the Y and then also 90 degrees on the X axis. And that will just put it flat 
So if we go into our 3D view again, and if I just uh, rotate around here, you'll see uh, that plane is perfectly flat on the grid. Okay, so let's go back to 2D. And uh, then I also want to give this a texture just so that we can see it a little bit better. So I'm going to create a uh, checkerboard. There we go. And then we're going to connect this image um, pipe from the card to the checkerboard. And that's just going to give it that uh, checkerboard texture. So what I also want to do is I want to disable this uh, point cloud because I don't really want to see it now in the scene. So just highlight it and press D for disable. And let's just render through this quickly. So as you can see, our camera track is pretty solid. It's looking good. It's sticking nicely to our scene. And that's basically how you do your camera tracking in Nuke. So in a future tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to export that camera tracking data if you actually want to use it in something like 3ds Max or in Maya or in Cinema 4D. But for now, I'm just going to stop here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy it. Give me a thumbs down if you didn't enjoy it. And let me know if you want to see more Nuke tutorials, more After Effects tutorials, more 3ds Max tutorials. And uh, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers, bye.